Well, friends, they are here, self-driving cars. They say they are the future, and the future is now. But with innovation comes the important talk of how to stay safe when operating these cars. WSFL-TV trusted advisors Victor Demesman Jr. and Jeremy Dober shared some tips on how to stay safe when behind the wheel of an autonomous vehicle. Get into this. Let's start with what an autonomous car is and how it works. Okay. I mean, it's a pretty self-explanatory thing for most people who've been on the road, but some people aren't even aware. It began when they first started doing self-parking cars that were able to do, they have sensors placed all around to know where the vehicles are, where to move them, and it is able to angle and move the actual wheel to drive your vehicle when it was self-parking. Now they've evolved that. Elon Musk, Tesla, they've done things. They've made it so it's driving that it can drive itself. It can go, you put a destination, it's able to have sensors placed all around the vehicle, cameras placed all around the vehicle. It's programmed with so much technology, I can't even go into it. That tells you what pe how people typically respond, how it's supposed to respond. And it's made to be a reactive AI in that same format and drive a vehicle itself. I think that's cool. <laughs> I mean, we, we now live in a time where, I mean, you had the Jetsons and everything else that predicted this type of technology existing and now yes. it's here. Victor, how safe are these cars? Well, I mean, like any other product, uh, there are some malfunctions sometimes, right? But these cars are tested, just like any product that's put on a shelf or sold to any kind of consumer. They do years of testing and, you know, making sure that before they put it out for the public, that they want to protect themselves also as a company, whoever it is that's creating these types of vehicles. So yes, they are safe, but like anything, things can happen. Right. Autonomy, S autonomous cars, you have autonomy. The, the car has autonomy over a lot. It's yes. in control of a lot. Yeah, so if yes, you yes. get in an accident, who's at fault? So this is the question that everybody always asks, but the answer is simple. You're still at fault ah. because, I mean, it doesn't, reduce, it doesn't release you from any kind of liability, right? You still own the car. You're still technically driving the car. So what you're saying that even though these are autonomous cars, they're not fully autonomous, right? You yes, still yes. have to operate and, and assume some kind of uh, functionality within the car. It's good to know. What if you get hit by? So uh, one of these cars, or your car is struck by one of these cars. I mean, you need to handle it just like any other auto accident, Jason. You need to make sure that you call 911, you have a police come out, do a police report, take your pictures, the usual stuff. And when it gets to the technicalities of fault and things like that, that's when you get a lawyer involved like us, where we look at it beyond of just what happened on a typical auto accident and see, we have to review also the technology, things behind that, and see if everything was functioning in the correct manner how it malfunctioned, if it malfunctioned at all, or if it was just driver error and circumstances and things happen and we have to determine negligence just like another automobile accident would be done. Yeah. Is that process different when it comes to the technology in these cars? Because I would imagine with a 2021 Camaro that's not an electric car, you have a traditional way of looking at these things, but with this technology that is super advanced, do you have to do, a, does that require a different process? Well, I mean, slightly, right? I mean, part of it is the same, but because this is a product now, right? There could be a product liability situation. So now, unlike other accidents where we're going after the driver and their insurance, sometimes we may be going after actually the company too that created the car, sure. right? If there is some kind of product liability situation. Do we see a lot of accidents in regards to autonomous vehicles here in South Florida? Um, I mean, you'll still see them because, first of all, there's always going to be the other factor. They may not be the one at fault, too, number one. The autonomous vehicle may be functioning perfectly fine, no one has an issue, and, and a normal person crashes into an autonomous vehicle. So that's never going to change on that realm. Right. The other half, in all reality, autonomous vehicles, if you review the statistics, are safer than the average person driving on, a, on the road. There are still going to be issues. There's still new technology. It's still being reviewed. It's not perfected. Just like everything that comes out in the first time, it takes years and years and years to figure out those kinks because they're not going to be apparent day one. The poor car is like, why are you blaming me? <laughs> you know, you got behind the wheel, but it's good to know because as we head into the future, more of these cars are going to arrive. Yes, we like it or not. Every month you see, hey, Ford, Chevy, you name it, they have fleets of these cars that are on yes. the horizon. So yeah, yeah. being aware of what's happening in the technology is always good. You want to stay safe and stay aware. Our WSFL TV trusted advisors, Victor Demesman Jr. and Jeremy Dober talking about autonomous cars. Who would have thought, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who would have thought? Appreciate you on Insights Off Florida. You guys are the best. Thank you. Thank you.